Welcome back to the latest makeover update. Uh, one thing for sure we've learned with makeover projects is that we have to expect the unexpected. And this time around, we had a little problem with our video. So we're going to bring you two updates into one this week. So follow me and we're going to show you what we've been doing. A few weeks ago, we told you about the water heater that was in the Quillhots house. It's a 1940s vintage Toastmaster water heater. It's amazing it's still working, but uh, it was just a matter of time before this thing would rust out and the Quillhots would have had a mess on their hands because this was located upstairs. Uh, we've taken it out and the new Marathon water heater that is connected with the D Super heater on the geothermal system is now up and running. Beside me is the brand new Marathon water heater, which is a very efficient design. Plus, the tank is designed to never leak or rust. One thing that makes the Marathon very efficient is the fact that it has almost no standby losses. And what makes that happen? It's the six inches of foam insulation on the top and bottom and three inches on the side as well. You may remember that we've foamed the Quill Hots house, both now in the attic and crawl space with foam insulation, and now that's what their water heater has around it as well. Two weeks ago, you may recall that we showed you the geothermal loops that were installed 200 feet each into the ground. Well, behind me today is what we call the header ditch. And you'll notice the ground looks uh, disturbed and quite messy. Uh, however, this will be finished out and the dirt will be graded back to its original height. Uh, but we had a lot of rain come in and we couldn't do those finishing touches until this dries out. The good news is we only had to disturb about 70 feet of the ground in order to install the geothermal system. So it'll be a matter of just touching it up and then a little bit of time and grass seed and you'll never know this system is here. The header ditch is simply a ditch that is dug next to the geothermal loops and then the heating and cooling installers take what's called a fusing tool and they fuse the pipes together. It's a heat process to where when this uh, coupling is made that no leaks will take place. As a matter of fact, they say the actual splice or fusing is even stronger than the loops themselves. Once the loops were fused together, two pipes were run from the header ditch into the crawl space of the house. The reason we located it in the crawl space is because originally the quill hots did not have a central heating and cooling system. They had window units and electric resistance baseboard heat. But in order for us to make this a centralized heating and cooling system, we had to mount the ductwork underneath the house into the crawl space, so that's where we put the heat pump, which would make the ductwork convenient to the unit. A common problem with home construction in America is that oftentimes the ductwork of a central heating and cooling system is located in an attic. And we've learned through the makeover project that the temperatures of the Quill Hots attic reached about 150 degrees. But due to the processes that we've implemented with the makeover, the ductwork is now in the crawl space. And with the crawl space insulated from the outside, the temperature in here will probably be a consistent uh, 50 to 60 degrees. And in air conditioning terms, that takes a lot of heating and cooling load gains or losses off the ductwork system. An added benefit of geothermal heating and cooling is what's called domestic hot water or the D superheater. And while the air conditioner is in the cooling mode, uh, BTUs that would normally be moved from the house and back into the loops within the ground are transferred to the water and so the water is preheated before it goes into the water heater in a very efficient manner. Most houses built in America on crawl spaces are not insulated and that was the case with the Quill Hots house. Uh, the perimeter walls and floors were not insulated and that caused a lot of cold air and air infiltration to come into the house. But we have a fix for that. On the outer perimeter walls, BPSI foam insulation sprayed a closed cell foam insulation. And above me on the floor, 
uh, they sprayed an open cell foam insulation. And so we're anxious to run the final blower door test to find out what kind of improvements these have made. We know from the guys that worked underneath here, they found a lot of voids and openings to outside. And so we know that a lot of the air infiltration problems in the Quill Hot's house are now fixed. The new Energy Star appliances have arrived on the makeover site, and you may remember our old Ward signature freezer that the Quill Hots purchased in 1977. We used our kilowatt uh, power saving device here, and we learned that the old freezer uh, consumed five kilowatt hours per day. And then we plugged it into the new General Electric Energy Star freezer and learned that the new counterpart only uses one kilowatt hour per day. If your refrigerator is older than 10 years old, now might be the time to look for something new. Uh, improved technologies, better compressors, better insulations, and better construction processes have improved appliances tremendously. When shopping for new appliances though, be sure to look for the Energy Star logo. They use up to 75% less energy than their counterparts. And the refrigerator that we're putting in the makeover house uh, is manufactured by General Electric and is touted to use only $62 annually. You may remember the large picture window at the Quill Hots house. A few weeks ago we showed you that we had some pretty significant heat gain coming from the glass. But we're going to address that today, and with me is Mark from American Window Tinting, and he's going to tell us what they're going to do. Okay, well, we're happy to be here, and basically what we're going to do is this large window behind us. We're just going to apply a 3M Prestige film. It's actually a clear film, so it doesn't hurt the view. And what it's going to do is basically just knock down lots of heat, and um, it's going to help keep the house cooler and make it more energy efficient. Um, also helps with the... Um, with the UV rays, so there's no fading in the floors or furniture and stuff like that. So Very good. We're gonna solve it today. Very good, well let's get started. Okay. It only took you about 15 minutes to put the film on. That was very impressive. Before you got started, I took uh, the digital infrared camera here and took some temperature readings. The surface of the glass was about 98 degrees and the carpet temperature from the solar heat gain was 104. So I set up the same conditions. I got the infrared camera back out and now the carpet was only about uh, 92 degrees, so we calculated about a 15% reduction in the solar heat gain. We knew the surface temperature of the glass would be about the same, mm -hmm. but it was about 3 to 5 degrees less. But it was absolutely impressive how much the film cut the heat gain into the house. And I even had a, my eyes actually relaxed once you put the tent on, and so it was very obvious that things were happening very quickly when you mm -hmm. put the tent on the house. Yep, it's almost an immediate feeling after you apply it. I mean, the people in the room, they said, you know, wow, it's almost like you put some kind of shade up, you know, and, but yet we kept the view and it looks beautiful. Very good. So that's the way it turns. Well, with all the other enhancements we've made to the makeover house, this picture window allowed a lot of heat gain into the house, but with the new 3M product on the window, that heat gain is going to be dramatically reduced. 